I've came back a little bit earlier than I usually would. There's only been a couple of games played since the last time we met. But th oh, I'm starting to get my hopes up, let's be honest. So the first game in after the January transfer window was an absolute crunch game. Stoke City at home, they were sitting in fifth position in the championship. We were around 10th, uh, hot on the heels of the playoffs. And a win in this game definitely put us in the playoff contention. Oriel Busquets put us in front two minutes in. Ian Acho equalised in the 44th minute for Stoke City. Keith Lonsdale, our young right back, got himself sent off in the 56th minute for a straight red card. And I did think at that point we were going to get beat. But Jude Bellingham got a goal in the 75th minute and we got the win. This game could very well be the turning point in our season. We then went away from home against struggling Sunderland and managed to get a 4-0 win. Esposito, Sarevic, Correa and uh, Mazemiru managing to get the goals. All of our new signings getting involved in uh, that one. What you've just saw there is my light in falling. And I did manage to catch it, so we carry on. So that's uh, the championship table looking like this. We sit in sixth position, level on points with Burnley. One point ahead of Stoke City. And there's a lot of teams in and around the playoff contention. But we are only 10 points away. From automatic promotion. Now it's probably too much to ask. We've already caught up the 10 point gap. Which we had about 7 games ago on the playoff spots. Being able to do that again. With only 13 games remaining. Would require us to perform an absolute miracle. Our squad would have to be on form. Every game for the rest of the season. Probably winning the vast vast majority of them. To be able to close that gap to Fulham. But maybe we could do it. We are in really good form. Our squad strong. I've got a little bit of faith. We're, we're managing to keep injury free pretty much relatively. Um, only suspension to Keith Lonsdale, obviously keeping him out in today's game. And Marcus McGuinn has picked up a call. So he got sent home. Get out of our squad before you infect everybody. Um, and I can't, I can't lie, I'm excited. I think we might be able to end up competing towards the end. So today's episode will be against EFC Wimbledon, who's currently sitting 21st. And Bristol City, who's currently sitting 13th. Two wins is what is required. Let's do it. So the lineup for today's game is as follows. Pena starts in goal. Espinosa is at right back as Lonsdale is currently suspended. Sandler and Marmol will be at our centre-halves today. Sehovic on the left-hand side. Busquets and Bellingham. Busquets has been excellent since he's joined the club, by the way. Um, pairing up in the centre of midfield. Felix Correa on the right-hand side. Mazamiru. Callum Robinson and Esposito leading the line. In terms of EFC Wimbledon, they're having the greatest of seasons. Currently sitting in the relegation spots. Can we... Or just outside the relegation spots, I think. Let's hope we can make it worse today at home. First highlight of the game. Two minutes in. We are on the attack down the right-hand side with Espinosa, who is a good attack and right-back. So he's a very good backup to have um, for us at this level. Esposito picks up the ball on the edge of the box. He's looking for the shot straight away. I do not mind that whatsoever, Sebastiano. Get your air shooting boots on. Sehovic drives into the box, goes for goal, and it goes wide. Another highlight now. EFC Wimbledon with the ball deep in their own area. A clearance falls straight to Marmol, who finds Bellingham, who finds Robinson. We've got a lot of attacking options coming down both sides. Espinosa finds Andrade. I'm guessing that's Felix Correa. Espinosa now driving in the box. He's going to go for goal himself. Our wing backs are not very good at shooting. This is what I'm realising. And yes, I have already told them to shoot less often. Sevic comes down this left-hand side. It comes back to Mazemiru after the cross is blocked. Bellingham gets dispossessed, but it finds Esposito in the box and he is not offside. Esposito gets his eighth goal of the season since joining about six weeks ago. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable stuff. Sevic tries to get the cross in. It's blocked. Mazemiru finding Bellingham. Does he actually pass this? He does not. It is the FC Wimbledon player who kicks it in Esposito's path. And he can beat the keeper quite easily. 1-0. Highlight now. It's a corner for EFC Wimbledon. Hartigan plays it in. Callum Robinson can get it clear. But McCochran can keep it alive for them. We do end up winning the ball back though. on Bellingham and plays the ball over the top for Esposito. Who's in behind again. Sebastiano, come on. I've been tarting you up and everything. And that is probably going to bring the end to the first half. A very, very dominant performance from ourselves. We need a couple of more goals though to really secure this. Let's see if our boys can do it in the second half. Highlight now, Mazamiru finds Sehovic bombing down this left-hand side. He whips the ball in. Esposito's there. And I'm telling you, lads, if you're in the championship, if you've got a little bit of money available to be able to sign a loan player, sign Sebastiano Esposito. He is an utter, utter god. 
And you can bet your bottom dollar if Birmingham City remain in the championship next season, I will be going back for him. If I can't sign a striker in the Premier League, if we end up getting promoted, I will be going for him. Nine goals of the season, 2-0. Happy days. 56 minutes gone now again. Coming down this left-hand side, we seem to be having quite a bit of uh, joy as Jude Bellingham <laughs> just bangs in a goal. Let's take a clap for that. Well done, Jude. Absolutely fantastic strike. His fifth goal of the season, an assist from our left winger, Callum Robinson. who's was actually our top goal scorer currently on 13 goals, which isn't too bad. But Bellingham is doing well in that centre midfielder at Med Metzala role. And ever since our new signs have came in, he has really started to flourish with really decent attack and talent. So um, nice to see the best out of him. Felix Correa, though, is not having the greatest game on that right-hand side, so we are going to get him off for Adam Armstrong. Trying to give him some game time on both wings and up front whenever possible, but uh, it's highly unlikely he's going to get too much game time going forward. We will look to make one other substitution, though. Espinosa will have to stay on. We'll get on Ryan Burke for Savic. Got two decent left-backs now, so we can comfortably make that change. Free kick from Ryan Burke's played in. It's cleared by Madeline for EFC Wimbledon. Espinosa stayed back, though. And we go all the way back to Pena. The ball finds its way to Callum Robinson on his left-hand side. He's in the box. Great striking, and that's a fantastic save by a keeper I was actually looking at during the window. Could have signed him for about 300k, a Polish keeper for EFC Wimbledon. But uh, we decided to end up going with the Spanish one from Barcelona. Instead, as Oriel Busquets finds Ryan Burke on this left-hand side, bombing down. He gets into the box. He gets tackled by O'Neill. And is that going to be the highlight? Yeah, it is. With 10 minutes to go, we'll make our final substitute of the game. Mazemiru can come off. We will bring on Liam Miller, our Canadian player, old lady players there. No Azmir Begovic in this one, though. And there it is for full time. Birmingham City 3, EFC Wimbledon nil. Esposito with a brace and Jude Bellingham with the other. A good performance. Um, Wimbledon were never really in that game. Bristol City's away from home next. I'll see you there. So we're at the Bristol City game. They look like they've got a pretty strong squad themselves. I know they spent a lot of money on Florinel Coleman in the January transfer window, spending £12.5 million on him. He's a very, very talented winger, um, so we'll have to keep an eye on him. They've got the likes of Vincent Janssen, Manolo Gabbiadino, Pedro Pereira, who I recognise. Um, so it is going to be a pretty tough game, but they are only sitting mid-table, and we are sitting in the playoffs. So we need a win. I'm just thinking about it. When don't we need a win? We always need a win, but today we really need a win. First highlight of the game comes 10 minutes in. It's Bristol City currently on the attack down there. Right-hand side with Pedro Pereira picking up the ball. Switching the play to Corman. We managed to get interceptions, or and Oriel Busquets picks it up. And we calmly played around the defence. Mazamira with a long ball over the top for Esposito. who's in behind now, and Sebastiano Esposito gets his 10th goal of the season. This is his ninth game for Birmingham City. And he puts us 1-0 up 11 minutes in. A devastating counter-attack after Bristol City. It did look like they were going to end up forging an opportunity for themselves. But Mazamira with an absolutely excellent through ball. And Esposito with the composure to bury it. It's took to the 40th minute to get our next highlight. This time it looks like it will be Bristol City on the attack. Masengo with the ball. Tears the strike and Inaki Pena gets an easy save in the end. Is this going to be a counter-attack for us? Maybe it is. Mazamiro picks up the ball, finds Adam Armstrong on his left-hand side. He cuts in. He's in behind. Probably should do better with that shot. The highlight continues, though. Marmol with a big kick over the top. Armstrong's in again. And another comfortable save by the keeper. Is this highlight going to continue? It's not. And there we have it. Four half-time. Bristol City nil. Birmingham won. It's not the most comfortable of games for ourselves, but we do find ourselves with the one goal advantage. We might need to change some things in the second half to make sure it stays that way. Keeping an eye on whatever Bristol City do, they've just went attacking, so we will go on a cautious team mentality now. But this highlight in 63 minutes in, maybe we could get our second goal and really put this game to bed. Felix Correa picking up the ball, driving inside, finds Mazamiru. And that, my boys, is one hell of a goal. Thomas Mazamiru with his second goal of the season, assist by Felix Correa. Let's take another look at that during the replay. Felix Correa does really, really well to get past a couple of men. Uh, find Mazamiru on the edge of the box, first time strike. Keeper. Maybe you should do a little bit better. It's not exactly buried into the bottom corner, but we don't care. 2-0. They have to go for this now. We're on the counter. Expect more goals. With only 10 minutes or so remaining, and we will look to make our changes. Mazamiro's had a great game, but we'll take him off. We will bring on Liam Miller to be able to play on that uh, just behind the striker. Uh, Savage will come off for Ryan Burke. Adam Armstrong can come off for Callum Robinson. All three changes made. Freshen up the side a little bit. And there's a highlight. Bristol City on the attack. Gabby Adini's in the box. And Inaki Pena with an absolutely unbelievable save. I don't know how much he knew about that, 
but Gabby Adini should definitely be putting that in the back of the net. Another highlight now, throw in this time for Bristol City. Please don't do this to me. Coyle whips the ball in. Gabby Adini's there. And Gabby Adini has been the one who should probably be getting Bristol City back into this match. Another highlight, another Bristol City chance. Vincent Janssen plays it back to Coyle. Tries to whip the ball in. Ben Wilburn's there. Janssen. We managed to get rid by Felix Career. We've got a lot of bodies back. Um, we should be able to defend this pretty well. But Ryan Burke heads the ball straight to Coyle. And he drives at him. Can we get this one? No, we can't. Nagy with the strike. And uh, four minutes remain. Surely now we are done. Another highlight. Miller to Callum Robinson. Back to Ryan Burke. I don't really want our boys bombing forward. Because this might end up happening. Ben Woodburn uh, picks up the ball for Bristol City. Coyle again on this right-hand side. Causing us all sorts of problems. Bombing back from defence. Gabby Dini down to Senghor. Ben Woodburn goes for the strike. And that is the goal that maybe brings Bristol City back into this. His sixth goal of the season. Bristol City won Birmingham 2. Now I'm on edge. And the game ticks away. And we don't need to be on edge anymore. Bristol City won Birmingham 2. Ben Woburn giving us the late scare. But we do get away with the three points. Which was much, much needed. And would you look at that boys. We now sit in fourth position in the championship. We're still not really secure in the playoffs quite yet. Three points clear from Burnley in seventh position. But I'm looking at second place. We are now eight points behind Derby. Fulham must have got beat. Derby are now the team to chase. Eight points, 11 games. It's possible. It is possible. We just need to keep our form going strong. Next episode then. Derby Fulham. <laughs> it's all got to be, hasn't it? I know there's only a couple of games in between. But when it's this big, if we get two wins out of two in them games, we will seriously close the gap looking in towards the running and we might end up being able to compete for automatic playoffs I'm, I'm hoping is pretty much a guarantee at this point with the sort of form we are in automatic is a bit of a pipe dream but it's a dream i'm dreaming but anyway if you have enjoyed today's video please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy